Yes, so um, this presentation is just going through two packages in R, which is the GG plot two package by Headley and the reporter as package, which was produced to be able to get um, extract information out of R and put it directly into Word. Um, so basically what I'm doing here is I'll but make sure you've got a copy of the code too so you can use it yourself. I've purposely used um, a data source that you guys can get straight off the web. I went hunting for um, a website that had repeated measures data sets and found quite a good one. Uh, what I'm using here is a repeated measures analysis of an anxiety drug on cats, which is why it's called cat angst. Um, and <coughs> what I've done is uh, there's some information on the data set as well because obviously it's got variables in it and, and I didn't want to do a big one list of what the variables were, there's not too many. Um, and so I've put in the information about the data set in a link um, so it'll be available as well. So as I said, this is repeated measures data and this is what I've been working with at work and you really do need something like ggplot, I believe, in order to really be able to visualise the data properly. Now obviously with repeated measures data, often it comes to you as a wide data set and for repeated measures you need a long data set. So when you've got your repeated measures over time, people tend to put them as a separate variable. So you've got one row per subject and all the time measures are coming out of separate variables. For doing repeated measures analysis, you actually need each combination of subject and time to be its own observation in the data set. Um, and so what I've used here is I've reshaped the data. You're probably familiar with the reshape package, which is another happy one, I think, and melts the command to go through and um, put it into the correct format. Um, so that's there just in case you want to work through the data because otherwise you'd just be downloading the data set and you wouldn't see where I got to with it. So what does the data look like without ggplot2? Well I went hunting to try and find out how to actually graph repeated measures data because remember with repeated measures data we've got a number of subjects measured a number of times. What we want to do is like draw a line for each subject for each of those observations that they've got. That's not what you standardly do with the plot command in R. And I found a loop method to be able to plot it. I don't know if that's the most efficient method of plotting it, um, but when I went hunting for one to use, that was the one that I found. So ID is the um, ID number of the cat. And that's what it looks like. Uh, so the drug's zilping, um, and it, you can see anxiety's been measured five times, and each of those lines is a different cat which is like not a very attractive graph. And you can see I've done the, I've done the title and I've done the axes um, labels as well. So basically you can use ggplot to do better graphs. That's the whole point of why on earth would I want to use ggplot. Um, it's called ggplot2 now. I'm not sure why there is no <coughs> ggplot without the two on CRAN. I'm assuming that was the old name and I don't know why it's <coughs> on the two. Yes. Um, so you can see there's some tricks to it. Um, so you pretty much put each command on a separate line. The way ggplot works is um, it's been programmed so you're dealing with graph aesthetics, which is what Hadley calls it. So how you do a line versus a scatter plot, that's an aesthetic, and colours an aesthetic, and groups an aesthetic as well. So you've got all these different factors in your data that you can manipulate for when you're coming into graphing. The other thing with ggplot is it's not like normal R where it'll continue the command until it hits like um, a bracket. It thinks that as soon as it hits the end of a bracket, that that's the final bit of the code that you've given it. So what you have to do is when you're putting your stuff on a different line, you have to put a plus sign in to just let ggplot know that there is more commands for it to follow coming below, and um, I'll point this out when we get to the code. And this plus has to be on the previous line, it can't be on the line, the next starting line, so you've always got to put it at the end of the previous line. And what I've been doing is I've just been creating an object, you know, with R you can create a plot object, that's just what I've, the way I've been doing it, and then I've been calling the object to actually get the graph to appear. So because I've been using our studio, of course all the graphs are going down the bottom <coughs> right window. So how have I done it? I've called the library ggplot2, obviously I've got it installed. I create an ANC scores object, which is the ggplot graph object, and all I'm doing is plotting that data set. 
the aesthetics is time and value, values the score of the anxiety. I'm using a geom line aesthetic at the moment, so what that means is I'm drawing a line for each subject on the plot, and then I'm just labelling the X and Y axis as before and giving it a title, and then at the bottom I'm calling the object which will make it appear on the screen. So that's what it looks like. It looks very, very similar to the other plot that we had before. Um, and again, it's not actually that fascinating a graph. I don't think you can really tell what's going on in the data looking at that graph. Remember, we've got two treatment groups. We've got cats who were given um, xylokine and cats that weren't. We've also got um, males and female cats in the sample as well. So it's a pretty confused looking picture. So what we can do with ggplot is we can actually start doing some nifty things with that. And one of the things we can do is colour it by sex. Um, so sex is the variable that's used to say whether they're male or female. I've created it as a character variable, um, so it's already a factor. And you can see all I've had to do is just put colour at sex in that first row in order to get it to colour by that. Now, you will get an automatic colours because ggplot has it, its automatic colouring that sits inside and that's its automatic colouring there and you can see we've actually got three groups there because whole females, so unspayed females are another group for some reason even though there's only two of them. So at least now we've got some idea of what the sexes look like. Now one of the things too, as I said, we've got the drug and the, no, and the placebo group or the no drug group, I don't actually know if they're going to placebo. So what we can do now is GG plus, so we can actually do two plots next to each other one without the drug, one with the drug, and have them sitting next to each other so you can visualise what's going on in the two groups um, before getting into data analysis. So this is all like exploratory data analysis. So using that facet and creating treatment as the, um, as the variable that's telling it how, what facets to do, we get the graph split like that. Now, you can do that on a character variable as well. It doesn't have to be numeric. So I've been doing it with drug levels where I've used, you know, control, low, medium and high and it's just gone and it puts the whatever is the content of the variable up the top as sort of the title of the facet. Doesn't look like there's an awful lot of difference in anxiety between the groups. Now the thing too, as I said, is obviously JGPlot has its own colour scheme that it comes with, I mean all these packages do. The colour scheme isn't actually that wonderful. I'm a bit old fashioned, I like pink for girls and blue for boys because that way I can actually see really easily what it looks like. So here I'm putting in an aesthetic for colour and I'm telling GG Plot what colours I want it to actually use for the groups. The key trick in here is you actually need to specify for every group in the data. So say I don't want to look at whole females, I have to take them out of the data. If I don't specify the whole female colour in there, I'm going to get an error message coming up in the console window that tells me new groups basically don't match, the number of groups don't match the number of colours you're using. And so that's it there. Um, and as you can see from that, I've actually used um, names rather than RGB or anything like that, colour schemes, which is quite nice. So pink's a colour, red's a colour, yellow's a colour and so forth, and there's often multiple options of colour inside those as well. Um, another thing you can do with JGPlot is you can see it, make it do an automatic regression line on your plot, um, just plot it straight on. So here I'm putting two regression lines on. This is, so you can see I'm using another geom. This is a smoothing line, so it's a regression line. And I'm doing it by sex. So it's going to give me two lines, one for males and one for females. And it's going to make it black. Um, standard error equals false because if you leave it out, it's said to be true. And you get like um, the 95% confidence interval around, which for this sort of graph, um, it, it overlaps so much, there's probably not any real point putting it on because you just get so much overlap of colour. Now, another thing you can do with ggplot is you can plot multiple data sets onto the same graph really easily. So here what I'm doing is I am constructing slopes and intercepts for the male and the female groups, this is the male code, to replicate what I, the graph I just showed you with the regression lines, but here I'm actually going to do the regression lines manually. So that's the male code, that's the female code, 
And see here what I'm using now, instead of the geom smooth, I'm using a geom app line. So app line, I think, is a normal command and plot anyway for plotting a straight line on a graph. So it's the same sort of thing for the aesthetics and ggplot too. And here I am as telling it what the intercept variable is inside that data, what the site variable is inside the data, and what the data sets are. And I just call things temp1 and temp2 when I'm messing around with stuff. And again, you get exactly the same plot. So it's just doing it manually. So there what I'm doing is I'm plotting three data sets. I'm plotting cat anxiety RE, which is the cat data and the lines. I'm plotting the slope and intercept for the male. And I'm plotting the slope and intercept for the female all onto the same graph. So you can do it another way. You can actually plot two lots of data where you actually want the data onto the same graph as well, rather than using another data set as a regression line. So this is an example here where I'd already constructed, already split the males and the females out into two groups to do those regression lines. Here I'm just plotting them as two separate plot, uh, sorry, two commands into the same plot. And so the key thing there is it's started ggplot that null in capitals. That's telling ggplot I'm not passing it a data set to do the routine stuff I've been doing with it, it's to read the data sets under the geoms that are coming through later. So that's that's why I've got that in red. And again, it's exactly the same data sets. It, and facets is the same, it's just exactly the same. It doesn't care that there's two data sets going at the, the data, it's using the values appropriately. Because remember, I had treatment in those two data sets as well, which is how it can do the facet. Okay, and this is just an example, as I said, it's all on aesthetics here, G on point is, is a scatter plot. Why you want to scatter plot repeated measures data is beyond me, so don't normally do this, but this is just an example of the measure scatter plot as a different kind of graph. It does, I think it does box plots and all that sort of thing as well, it does an awful lot of stuff. Now, on to the reporter's package. Um, do feel free to ask me questions in there if you want. Everyone's sitting quietly. So why am I interested in the reporter's package? At work we're a word environment, we don't use um, LaTeX, I use LaTeX for my PhD, but work I don't think is terribly interested in making a whole bunch of scientists suddenly learn tech. Um, and I've had the issue where you know everyone analyzes in a data in a statistical package, irrespective of what the stats package is, and then copies and pastes data in, or manually transcribes across, and then you end up with these problems like you've got transcription errors, and how on earth are you going to pick those up without someone rerunning the code and manually checking? Um, obviously, because it's going into a Word document, Word environment, you can come into that document later and you can you know, add text and so forth. Um, remember to shift it if you do that, because if somebody else runs the code again, it will overwrite the uh, Word document you've already got without prompting. So um, that's a little trap. Um, so it prints directly into a Word document, and um, yeah, as I said, the LaTeX and HTML, it's not necessarily that useful for some of the other packages. So basically, what you have is a wrapper, I suppose is what it is. You create a, a object, a Word object, inside R, when you've obviously I've loaded the package. Um, and then we write it out at the end. So we just start the object, write it out at the end. And what I've done is, um, my doc is just what I've called it. I think I call it my example doc. So you can call it whatever you like, put your path in for what you want, and then obviously it's going to be a docx document. So it seems to handle, well it's handled everything I've been throwing at it. I've actually been using this um, for the, some of the work I've been doing with the toxicologists at work, because I've been producing a lot of tables a lot of tables and quite a few graphs and um, I just wanted an automated way of just passing table after table after table into a document. We're talking a document that's about 60 pages long of output, primarily tables. <laughs> so, um, it will, so it does tables, it does graphs because it, these are all objects. Headings, it will give you your heading styles and where it's got its own built in style guide that I think you can actually change, but I haven't been um, manipulating that. Um, you can put text in, I'll show you two ways of putting text into the document from inside R, and you can put page breaks in, which is really great when you've got a table breaking part way through, for example, because of your page sizing. 
So I did all the data before, that's just an example of, of creating data sets and making them as data frames. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating the table that's putting the male and the female data together. So it's just the slopes and the intercepts creating a table of the data that we were using earlier. So I've, I've started my example as the document object inside, as the word document object inside R, and then I'm writing it out at the bottom. So you can see that I'm adding a table, telling it to add a table is flex tables the command to do it inside reporters. And then you just tell it which table you want, and I always say get rid of the row names because otherwise you get the row numbers in, and I don't really think there's any point to that. And then it just literally picks up what's in your table and writes it to where it writes it at the point you do the add. So the first step, you're creating the flex table that you then add it into the Word document, but it only writes it out to Word at the point at which you run the write doc command. So what you can do is you can create object after object after object if you want, and then you can just do all your adds at the end, as long as you're not reusing names, obviously. Um, or you can structure it as you go through. I tend to write out as I'm working through stuff just so I don't forget to write something out. Um, so that's what that code does, is it prints a nice little table in Word. Pretty boring little table, but it, it does it. So, as I said, we can actually add headings in here. Um, the heading command is add title. You specify what level you want. So here I'm saying I want a major heading, so it's a level one. So that just numbers down like you're used to in Word. And I have my um, heading, plus also it, because it's creating it in Word as a Word heading, you can see if you like using navigation inside Word, you can actually use your navigation pane with this as well, which I find really useful because I love headings and navigation panes. So you can also add plots and subheadings. So here what I've done is I've put in a level two heading, um, two level two headings, and I'm adding a plot, and the command for that's just simply add plot. Notice that this is function equals print in the command for the plot. I didn't have to do that for the table, but for some reason I have to do that for the plot. And I get a, the scatter plot that we saw earlier with a heading above it, and the table with a heading above it. So it just pops out in the order in which you're specifying the add. Now the table's pretty boring, we can make it fancier. What I'm doing here is I'm actually colouring the cells on the table. So the rules are, it's um, row then column. So for the first one's colouring the first two rows in all four columns, the second one's colouring the last two rows in all four columns, because the table is male and female horizontally. And I've specified the colours I want, and bomb my nice pretty. Now I did this because I had 60 pages of tables that I needed people to look at, and I thought, and they were four results per sex, and so I thought it's just easier if you just give some colour so that the people that need to be able to read it, it slips out to them instead of expecting them to do it. And then we can actually add text. Now this is one way of adding text. Notice I'm adding a paragraph, and that's how you add text. So one way to do it is actually simply to type your text in quotes. And then you get the, my, exactly, exactly what you wrote there. You can put in a page break if you want. Just do the add paragraph and don't and put an empty quote. And that will give you a paragraph return in your document without putting any text. Um, we can do page breaks, so really simple, it's just a page break. And um, here what I've done is the female results I created as a capture output object earlier when I was showing the GG plot. This is an example of how you can output an object that you've captured that's actually text and output it into Word. Um, so here you can see we've got the hard return, uh, the page break from the command, and this was the text that was inside the capture object. So it's picked up the text, the font, that, the doc, that it's got as a default with its style, but then obviously um, for getting it into proper column format, you can just go and turn it into courier or something like that just to get all the columns to line up because it's, um, it's obviously not sitting right just in that font. I think it's Calibri. Ah, and the extra slide, what I've got is, obviously if you're gonna use color, 
you need to know what all the colours are. That's a website that actually tells you all the colours you can access on the site are through ggplot. Um, and so you can actually just go and read what the colour name is and then type the colour name in, which is how I think about it. And that's my final slide. Cool. I'm liking this because of its simplicity. Bank, up you go, data set, and uh, straight on, paragraph, straight on. I can almost see how you can read re re read in the text from a paragraph from another file, and then and then bangs in, into into word it goes. Mark Markdown's pretty quick. Actually, you can just you just literally type your paragraph in, and then you just have like a top and bottom hmm. end on the on the code section as well. I'm, I'm curious about how you collaborate with other people in do you find that you send them a Word document and then they edit it? Do you then have to make the edits back in your source or can you? Yeah, so um, some of us, like when I first was spinning out the tables, there were, I didn't have too many because I had a lot of um, a lot of data to analyse and then when I realised just how many tables I was getting, that's when I started doing the changes. Um, there were some notes I was making in the text under the table, which is like, I noticed that there'd be like a very large standard deviation for one group, and so I was making like a little note underneath that there's a very large standard deviation, or um, that there was a statistically significant result. So I was using Dunnett's test, for which um, when you compare a control against um, experimental groups, but you're only doing the comparisons to the control. Um, and so there was some where I was getting a statistically significant result, but it wasn't clinically significant. So I was going back and just um, basically taking out those notations so that the pathologists, for example, wouldn't get confused about what was going on. Well, would they like tend to send you back a Word document with track changes in it and so on, and then you did go back to your oh, last right. bit? Oh, right. I'm lucky the person I've been working with sits directly over the divider uh -huh. from me, so I haven't had the distance issue, but other people it just tends to be email, and then I just go through and, and make the changes. Yeah. But the advantage of this too, of course, is because it's Word, anyone can then go in, um, you might consider this a disadvantage, and you know, type things into the document directly because you can now handle it and so <coughs> forth. But those changes would get overridden if you change your code. Yeah, that, yes, that would run into the um, dark down, but you go back to the original file and type it in there and just reprocess it and uh, how you can press to everything changes in the final document. Oh, yeah, if it gave me the feedback, I, it would re I would do that and it would reprocess it into a new file. Okay. Um, can you um, get uh, output in slide for me? I don't know, I haven't tried. Um, and I think PowerPoint was another one where they were looking at doing it directly. But I've been basically um, concerned with Word and so much like this has been a Word. Very nice and very essentially the same document. Yeah. Could you prove cold chunk with the uh, package? Yes, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Thank you very much, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.